Hey everybody, good morning. Pastor John here from New Life Church in El Waco, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, April 30th, 2023. Now, how many of you know that things don't always happen at the most convenient time? Now, when you talk about things not happening at the most convenient times, I'm sure you're already thinking of examples. There's things that have happened in your life and you said that could not have happened at a worse time. But I think when we're talking about convenience, uh, one of the thing, one of the times when that's especially true is with babies. Have you ever noticed that babies don't always come at the most convenient time? Now, I mean, I'm an exception. I have always been a good boy, and that's exemplified by the fact that I arrived at the very convenient time of 4.44 in the afternoon. I mean, it was after lunch. It was before dinner. If Will of Fortune had been a thing then then my mom probably still could have caught up with Pat and Vanna before the night was over. I mean, I was a good boy, but that's not always the case. I mean, babies come all times of day, including weird hours in the middle of the night. And it's not just about when they come, it's also about how they come. Some babies take forever to arrive. And then you've got some babe, some moms that, that can't even make it to the hospital. I mean, we got babies being delivered in the car or being squeezed out in the hallway before the doctor's even ready to catch. Not every baby is convenient. And it's not just babies. You know, as I was saying, you were probably, probably already thinking about other examples, about times when things happen in your life that it wasn't the most convenient time or it wasn't the best time for that to occur. And, and I would argue that with certain tragedies and things like natural disasters, there's never an acceptable time for that to happen. For, for example, uh, Sundry and my wife, uh, her family's home was destroyed by a tornado when she was in eighth grade. And uh, their, their home was destroyed by the tornado with them in it. There is no way that you can ever really be prepared for that. I mean, no amount of insurance is uh, ever going to be able to make up for all of the inconvenience of having your life, or in this case, your home, literally turned upside down by an event like this. Now, whether it's a tornado or a flood, a landslide here in the Pacific Northwest, or an earthquake, um, it's hard to prepare when sudden tragedy hits you like that but we do try we try to prepare we get insurance for example to cover our belongings and and to make repairs when things go wrong uh, we store up food we store up water to make sure that we have resources in case the supply chain is interrupted some people have bug, bug out bags and that's especially true here where we might have to leave or get out of town in the event of a potential tsunami or something like that. Uh, so sometimes you have to be ready to move quickly, to escape, uh, and that's what the necessity calls for. So yes, we prepare in much the same way you prepare for the baby's arrival. You gotta make sure you got your bag ready to go so that you're able to get to the hospital when it's time. But not all babies give you those warnings and natural disasters can happen really fast. And so it's best if we prepare. In much the same way, we discussed this last week when uh, we read from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul writes to Timothy, he says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. Did you notice what he says in verse 2 here? He says, preach the word of God. Be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. And how are you supposed to do that if you don't know God's word? Psalm 119, it says in verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Knowing God's word is critical. Now, I don't mean memor memorization or the ability to recite it. No, no, hang on. I'm not suggesting that that's a bad thing. Memorizing God's word is a great thing. Being able to recite it, that's fantastic. But what I'm asking is, do you know what it says? 
Are you able to articulate important theological concepts like justification, salvation by grace, vicarious atonement? Oh, what, what's with all the blank stares out there in, in, in Mevo land? Uh, you need to get the word of God into your heart so that you might not sin against him. But you also need to know what it says so that you can minister to others when the time comes. Now, I just used a couple of big words there, like vicarious atonement. Well, hang on. Does God's word tell us that Jesus died for our sins? Yes, it does. Second Corinthians 5.21. There you go. And now that you know what 2 Corinthians 5.21 is, is there that it's in God's word, congratulations. You're an expert on vicarious atonement. The next time someone needs to know that Jesus died for their sins, you'll be ready. 2 Corinthians 5.21. And it's not limited to salvation. There is wisdom in God's word. There is hope in God's word. There's love and healing and restoration and all of the promises that God has made to us in his word. And so you need to know where to find those things, what it says, so that when the time comes and ministry is expected of you, you will have that information ready to go. Because in my experience, ministry doesn't always happen at the most convenient times either. In fact, it often happens outside of business hours, and it very often happens and should often happen outside the walls of the church, and that is why you have to be prepared. You're not always going to have the opportunity to go grab your pastor or even maybe give him a call and see if he can meet you. You see, sometimes you are going to have to be the one who handles God's business. You are a minister of reconciliation. Well, how do I know that? Because the Word of God tells us. And if you are, you have the responsibility to sometimes be God's hands, or sometimes be His feet, or sometimes speak His Word. And those messages have to go out to people, whether the pastor's available or not. And if we're doing kingdom work, that oftentimes is going to mean you. There are many examples of this in Scripture, but I want to look at one of the, the best, in my opinion, as it relates to what we're talking about today. So if you have your Bible, go to John 3. We're actually going to spend a little time here as we go throughout the day. We read in verse 1 that there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus comes to Jesus under the cover of darkness. He's got questions. Now there's a couple of ways that this could have gone down. Jesus could have said, listen, get out of here, you sorry Pharisee. I mean, you, you didn't even have the courage to come and ask your questions in front of all your friends. You're going to come sneaking in here after dark and expect me to answer your questions. But we all know that that's not what Jesus does. He patiently answered Nicodemus' questions because he was prepared. Jesus knew God's word. Well, technically, he, he, he is the word. But anyway, Jesus knows what he needs because he's actually educated in this. He knows the Word of God. He's been involved in learning and teaching God's Word his whole life. He's been doing this since he was very young, and we know that because that information is also available in the Scripture. So when he gets this question uh, from Nicodemus early in the evening or after dark, Jesus isn't phased. He isn't rattled. Jesus is prepared. Which brings us to our next, I'm going to say, kind of our final point for today. And it's one that's extremely important. Because God's Word also tells us to ensure that we are ready for Christ's return. That we need to be prepared for that. 
For example, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 and 3, it says, For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When, when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. So just like I said when we started, babies don't always come at the most convenient time. And so I guess we can also say, neither will Christ return. It won't be the most convenient time for everybody. Ministry opportunities are going to be going on around the clock until Jesus returns. And when he returns, that return can be unexpected. And that's why we must be prepared. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? For the answer to that, let's go back to the conversation that Nicodemus is having with Jesus in John 3. Verse 3 again, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back in his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly, possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone from heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And then Jesus says this, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. See, you make sure that you're prepared for Christ's return in the same way that you make sure you are prepared for any other event that may end your life here on this earth. Everyone who believes in Jesus will not perish but have eternal life. There is no judgment against anyone who, who believes. That's what we just read here. We read this in God's Word. So you, you prepare for the return of Christ by knowing this truth from the Word of God. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Jesus Christ. If you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're not prepared. You're not prepared for death, and you're not prepared for his return. And based on what I've read in God's Word and what I'm seeing, I think you should be prepared. I think you should be prepared all the time. His return could be imminent. His return could be any moment. It doesn't always happen at the most convenient time. He's like a thief in the night. And so you have to be prepared. My encouragement is that you get yourself and your heart ready to go. You don't know when that baby's coming. So you got to have the bug out bag ready to go to get to the hospital. You don't know when the natural disaster's coming. So you got to have things prepared and ready to go. You don't know how many minutes you have left in your life. So you need to make sure that you are prepared and ready to go. And to do that, you put your faith in Jesus Christ. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. Make sure today that you are ready to go, that you're prepared, no matter what the season is, because you're not promised tomorrow. Am I being morbid? Am I trying to scare you? Absolutely not. I just want you to be prepared. In much the same way that you would prepare for a natural disaster, I want you to be prepared for the return of Christ.
But instead of storing up food and water, you need to make sure that you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, for some people, that's really easy. And if that's where you are, then I encourage you to call out to him. Ask him to forgive your sins and ask him to be the Lord of your life. He did die for you after all. So why don't you begin to do things God's way? But if you still have questions, reach out to us. Because for some people, it's not that simple. They need more information. Now, there's a ton of information in God's Word, and I would love for you to get in there and study it for yourself and know it and be prepared. But for the, right now, for the short term, if you have questions, reach out to us here at the church. Give us a call. Uh, send us a message. And let us answer those questions for you. I don't want to leave you hanging. I, if you need to come to me under the cover of darkness and, and, ha and ask some questions, that's fine. Jesus set the example for me to be ready to do ministry any time of the day. But listen, I'm not the only minister out there. What about that friend or loved one, possibly the person who sent this to you? Do they know God's word? Yeah, that's probably why they sent this to you. Reach out to them because they're a minister too, and they can answer your questions. Let's get into God's word together, study who he is and his love for us, and understand this concept that we put our faith in him, we can be saved. Because when we leave this life, whether it's through Christ's return or because of our own demise, we need to be prepared because as we leave the temporal behind, we're going to enter into the eternal. And the only way that there will be no judgment against us is if our faith is in Jesus Christ. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, for those who are watching today, if there's someone out there who is right now making a decision to follow you, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you fully engage with them. Let your word be clear to them so that they understand how to put their faith in you and that they can walk in uh, in an understanding that you can be Lord of their life and that they can live in the benefits and the blessing of your word when they put their faith in Jesus. And Lord, if there is someone out here today who's watching and, and I ask that you quicken in them, maybe they are prepared, but they know others who are not. Allow them to be able to use this message as a tool to reach the lost. And for those who are lost, Lord, if they're watching this now, May they celebrate knowing that they are found, that you love them so much that you sent their son, that you sent your son to rescue them so that they could have eternal life. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus. We'd all be lost without him. But thank you for making a way that we can be prepared to face all of eternity because of the sacrifice that you were willing to make. It's in Christ's name that we pray this morning. Amen. Hey, again, if you have questions, reach out to us, reach out to a friend, reach out to someone who knows God's word. Everything we need to know is in there. There's some great theology like vicarious atonement. But really, guys, the truth is that it's simple and it's easy to understand. God didn't, he didn't put it into riddles. We just sometimes have to put the pieces together so that we can see the bigger picture. And so if you have questions, reach out to someone who knows the word of God. Don't leave this thing unsettled. Don't go forward unprepared. You need to be prepared for Christ's return. It could happen anytime. So give us a call. Let us know. Let us answer your questions. I love you guys. Hope to see you next week.